Hello, Bots and Books fans, this is Scorp1701, and I welcome you to part two of the Marvel Legends Spider Man and his Amazing Friends series. And tonight, we are showcasing Firestar. And she is hot. She is a very, very sought after figure. Uh, she was a fans channel exclusive, which means you can only get her online. Some comic book shops have bought her, and you can buy them there, of course. But uh, for the most part, she's not going to be available at big box stores. So, um, a little bit about her. She was created for the 1981 Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends series. They wanted the Human Torch, but for some reason he was uh, unavailable. And so, they created a completely new character with his powers. They ripped him off from themselves and gave us a female version called Firestar. And she was a mutant, she hung out with the X-Men, and that kind of propelled her off, off of the TV screen and into the comics. So she did make her debut in the comics as part of the Hellions, and then she became a new warrior, and then eventually made her way back to the X-Men, I think. I'm not really sure about what she's doing now but she does have a history sort of like harley quinn of course angelica did it first <laughs> all right so enough about the character so let's get into this toy so taking a look at the box you can see it's in your standard marvel legends box you have a nice open window here and you can see the figure in there and some accessories you have marvel's firestar here hasbro here at the top of the box you have firestar that is a nice logo four plus warnings on this side of the box a nice cartoony picture of firestar and on this side of the box a nice cartoony picture of firestar coming to the bottom you have some credits for the box and a barcode and on the back of the box we can ooh, zoom out a little bit and we can see that full picture of firestar and a very nice cartoony background and if we go up here to the top right we can get a little bit of read up about her. Let's zoom in and see if it says anything different than what I've said. Angelica Jones soars into battle, harnessing the power of microwaves to combat evil as Firestar. Yay! Angelica Jones. So that is her. That is a little bit of her origin. Uh, coming back down to the bottom of the box, you do have some more warnings and Marvel and Hasbro and all sorts of good stuff. But anyway, that is the box. And no one wants to see this beautiful girl in the box. I know I don't. So let's get her out and see what she can do. And here we have Firestar out of the box. And out of the box, she stands just over six inches tall. And she comes with this nice background of their secret headquarters, which was at Aunt May's house. And uh, this is kind of that classic thing where you would uh, go in there and you'd twist a switch or th something and everything would turn around and reveal all the crime fighting equipment and super lab. And it was pretty cool. And... Uh, that gimmick's been used several times in different series. But anyway, out of the box, Firestar comes with a few accessories. She comes with an alternate head, an extra pair of hands, two awesome fire effects, and Mrs. Lion, her faithful pet dog. But we'll have a chance to look at all those later. Right now, I want to take a look at Firestar herself. <laughs> coming real close in on Firestar. She is currently sporting the cartoon head. I like this sculpt. You can tell it's the cartoon head because it just has a single point here at the top of the mask and it has a point coming here in the middle and you can see she has some nice uh, molded hair. I love this red with the darker wash around the back of it. So we can get a real close in. I love the detail there. You can see the little uh, molds of hair uh, coming in, spiking up from the sides. That is just awesome. And uh, I like these two locks that come down uh, really far in the front. So that is cool. And coming down to her face as close as I can get, she has a really, really nicely done face. It's a nice color. And if you can look real close in, her eyes, you can see a little bit of blue. I don't think it's showing up in the uh, on the camera, but it is there if you uh, see it with the naked eye. 
She has a nicely sculpted nose and a mouth, nice pink lips. You can see some teeth in there, nice chin. They did a really good job with this face sculpt and I really, really like it. All right, going down, basically she has a high yellow collar suit and it's all yellow except when you get down to the gloves and you can see a little bit of paint differential with the orange and that fades to the red for the cuffs and to the fists she doesn't have any belt any other color coming down to her legs when you get down to the bottom you have that same pattern for her boots the yellow moving to orange moving to red and that is pretty much this girl and it was a very simple design but it was awesome okay let's turn her around and see that there's really nothing uh different about her on the back you can just see it's all yellow same kind of motif all right and that is what firestar looks like and before i get to articulation i wanted to go ahead and show off this alternate head this head is obviously from the comic books because you can see there is no point in the middle of the mask and the mask comes up to several points coming to the side so that is pretty neat but other than that her lips here are darker red than on the uh, initial one and uh, her hair is still is red and you still have some uh, darker wash coming down here near the bottom but as you can see that the hair is molded in a kind of a windswept kind of uh, way so that is pretty neat and that will help us out immensely for the articulation so we can bring the current firestar here and if you want to take a look at and look at both of the heads together there they are so you can see the difference um i really like this head this is the head that i was going to stay on my figure but because the comic accurate head is molded with the hair swooshed over to the side i think that will make articulation a lot better so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pop angelica's cartoon head off and put this one on and we will show that off real quick so we can get a look at that so that's pretty neat uh, i really don't like that head but to each their own you may like that head and if you do then congratulations you can have that on your toy moving into articulation the head is on a ball joint and it is on a hinge so it can go around 360 degrees that is a lot easier and the hinge can hinge down and it can hinge up just a little bit and it can tw twist from side to side that is pretty neat coming down to her shoulders shoulders can come up and down and they can go all the way around she has a bicep swivel here she has a single elbow hinge here. She has a wrist swivel here and it is on a hinge so it can go in and out. That is cool. Coming down to her abs, she only has a upper ab articulation. So if you grab her here from the diaphragm area, this is where you'll be able to turn her 360 degrees and you can kind of move wiggly waggly up and back and forth so a lot back not too much forward all right coming down no waist articulation like i said and her legs can go up a long way that's some good kicking they can't go back that far because her butt gets in the way they can go out to the side a little bit so that is good uh, she does have thigh rotation and she does have a double knee bend so that is nice and coming down she does not have any type of boot cut because this is all one solid piece but her foot is on a hinge so it can go up and it can go back down and it can rock all the way around so that is going to be her articulation and i think it's a good amount of articulation except when you have this awesome cartoon head on interesting thing about this collar we will go ahead and let me uh put the cartoon head back on and show you this <clears throat> so the collar is very flexy so if you want you can have angelica look like this or you can actually bring the collar in to give her a more 
how cartoon accurate looked to have it looking like that. So that's a pretty interesting thing that you can do. And I think that goes into articulation for the character. So, all right. And that's it for her articulation. Moving on. And for accessories, she has a pair of these nice uh, plasticky fiery uh, effect very soft and gummy like and they will just fit over either of her hands and if we could bring her out we will show it off so see it goes right nicely just wraps on her uh, hand and you'd want to just wrap it in there like that and so that gives her a nice fiery effect so uh, I think this is like when she's transforming I am Firestar so those are neat and she has this set of open hands and they are nicely sculpted and the fire effect that we saw earlier can work with these two so they could just wrap in there and she can like have fire kind of shooting out of her hands like so I like these fire effects and I think that is really hot <laughs> all right moving on and for the last accessory, she comes with Mrs. Lion. Yay, her faithful puppy. And this is done very, very nicely. It's uh, just plastic and you have a lot of nice details for the dog's coat. The little tail that sticks up and is covered with fur. That is really nice. A lot of uh, detail in there. You get the little feetsies on the bottom. Oh, they're so cute little feetsies. And you can come up to the head and you can see she's got her little bows on her ears and her eyes are a nice brown, nice black nose and the little mouth is there with a line. You can see it's nicely molded. You can see that her jaw is there and her head is actually articulated and it will move left and right all the way around if you have a possessed uh, Mrs. Lyons, that's cool. And he's also on a hinge so it can look down and kind of up a lot. So that is neat. I like this little thing. I think it's definitely better than a wheeler I'm about to look at in a few weeks. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that is Mrs. Lion. Moving on. And for comparison, here she is with Marvel Legends Scarlet Witch, Jean Grey, Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Batgirl, and the Power of the Primes Nova Star. Well, it said Nova Star on the package, but we know who she really is, don't we? I sure miss our rescue missions together, Firestar. Me too, Inferno. <laughs> this has been some comparisons. Moving on. And for our series comparison, here she is with Iceman. These are our happy mutants, and this three-person team is shaping up quite nicely. All right, moving on. And this has been the Marvel Legends Firestar. And this lady has been a long time coming. I am very happy that Marvel Legends has released her and adds it to our collection so we can make a six-inch spider-man and his amazing friends this figure is very very well done i love the paint job the sculpt the mold everything about her marvel legends keeps nailing it when they do their uh, female figures i think so if you're looking for this particular figure you can find her online gamestop.com our Big Bad Toy Store, or various other places. Like I said, she's an online toy only unless some of the comic book shops in your area uh, happen to pick her up, so you can try there. But uh, eBay is a good choice, and Macari and other online retailers. So anyway, she should retail around 20 to $25, depending on where you go. And I would definitely recommend picking her up. If you don't want to do the Spider-Man and his amazing friends set, you could also fill the hole in your new warrior set that she would fit right into. All right. Well, guys, that is the review part two of Marvel Legends Spider-Man and his amazing friends series. And you know who's next. So until next time, guys, have a good night and keep playing.